Welcome to Comfort Having Number Two. This is the third part of people of color being brutality, being whatever. It's part three. This is the second attempt at part three because I had to delete the video because somebody joked on my doorknob when I know they saw those bloody lights. Anyway, hopefully that problem is solved. Uh, in the other two videos, it got more on the martial arts side than more of uh, what I meant to do. So we're going to try to avoid martial arts in this conversation after this uh, salient point. Uh, as a martial artist, I have been trained in various forms of how to stop a person from hurting me. And I know for a fact that uh, the human neck is like my primary target because that's what I was taught to do. In uh, many cases, chokeholds have been applied to people of color choking them out and and they later dying because as I said in the other videos your neck is easiest part of body to break next to elbows and kneecaps and the thing that makes a person dangerous is their knowledge of such body mechanics you know and cops and military men we are taught body mechanics on what works because what works on someone else will more than likely work on you and the thing with that is, you know, if I can bend my finger back by myself and it doesn't hurt, then it won't hurt when someone else is bending it back. Because I will be thinking about why it didn't hurt when I did it versus someone else do it. But your pain and tolerance and your compliance has a limit. Now, it's the same thing if I put you in an arm bar and you put me in an arm bar, it's going to feel the same way for both of us. And it's going to hurt, depending on what kind of arm bar it is. If it's the one behind your back that cops generally use where they jack your hand up and they push your shoulder muscles high and out of its actual joint range, um, it can cause some problems. Um, I think that the police officers honestly need to go back to just taking you up the front. No. The only problem with that is that when they take it to the front, it gives you the option to still use your handcuffs as a weapon. I have a video here about that. So now we're going to get off of martial arts and get on to the nitty gritty of what this video was supposed to be in the first place. These police officers in this world today seem to forget that they are dealing with human beings. And human beings tend to not... Um, remember the laws of the land sometimes and a lot of human beings aren't really compliant individuals this young man was different he was complying you know and like I said I don't know what happened between them escorting him across the street to how they got back to wherever they were with the officer and his knee in this guy's neck the thing about that is you know I'm sure there'll be more video that's gonna show up soon and if so, and I see it, I will probably try to update you guys on my feelings on that. But I am completely disgusted with the way this has unfolded. The um, the cops did not have to have the guy's knee on his neck, especially if they had already escorted him across the street. There's no one telling us what in the hell went wrong between them getting him across the street and him to not comply, and then he lost his life. No. Uh, when the big guy did the video and he couldn't breathe and they showed him in the daylight in New York getting choked out, no. The cop behind him had him in the rear neck and choke, no. And the thing about that is, it's pretty much the same thing as putting your knee in this guy's back of his neck. Cops tend to forget that Heated situations, if you don't defuse them, they only get hotter. And you are taught, because I was told this by a teacher or two in um, my police science and criminal justice class, that you are taught first and foremost to defuse the situation instead of trying to um, let it escalate. And a lot of times, these things do work out where the officer is actually a champion. Of the people and he can calmly talk to someone and defuse and nine times out of ten the people he's talking to 
will comply and be like, okay, yeah, I can, I can calm down a little bit. I've been in enough situations, I've been handcuffed twice, to understand if, if you are calm, if you are cool, most things go over pretty smoothly. And unless you got outstanding warrants, you're probably going to go home. No, unless you're doing drugs, you're probably going to go home. In my situations where I was handcuffed, I just happened to be the right guy at the right place at the wrong damn time. And that's pretty much how that worked. Twice. The first time was at the university. And my cousin's cousins on his mom's side got to fighting over a fucking small cigarette. And um, had they not bust that bottle of beer, we probably all would have been in jail because they were underage drinking. And I was the responsible adult. But I didn't know how young these cats was. So that really wouldn't have been something they could have locked me up for. Other than, you know, hooligans. So then after that, you know, the um, second time, another cousin who took a van because he got kicked out of the club because he wouldn't stop running his damn mouth, got me handcuffed. And the cops um, put the guy who broke his fist on my face in the car as his big brother kept talking to me. And I told him, I said, dude, you don't know who the hell I am. These handcuffs only make me more dangerous to you than you are to me. And he's like, little man, how you figure that? I said, because this little man knows Kung Fu. This little man was just given weapons. And so he got to laughing. I said, dude, I've been trained how to fight with my hands tied. I mean, this here's just weapons. All I got to do is get to you. I said, like, there's quite a few punches that I can throw with both my hands at the same time. But after the cop explained to me that I was driving a stolen car, you know, I kind of calmed down a bit because I was driving a stolen car that happened to belong to the guy who broke his fist on my face. So I'm like, okay, okay, let me calm down. So then the other cop told the big brother, look, just leave him alone, man. He's already in enough trouble because he didn't have nothing to do with this. Your brother had admitted that he'd never seen me before. So just stay the hell away from him. The dude is pissed off. Now, see, had the cop probably done something like that, it probably would have been a different scenario and not wind up sitting on this dude's neck. And then the canine cop, they got me off. And I thank you, by the way, brother, because I've never broken the law. I've had a few speeding tickets, so, yeah, I broke the law that way. But as far as stealing somebody else's car, I was a college student. I don't have time to go to jail for somebody else's damn dumbness. This young man... George Floyd, who lost his life over God only knows why, is his family right now is going through some shit because the cops did not stay calm and try to talk to this man. And I need to see more video, but I'm pretty sure what I saw, everything looked like it was going to work out pretty good. And next thing you know, they got the guy knee in the guy's neck and then this guy dies later. When he's in distress. He was in distress the entire time the man had his knee in his neck. I'm going to explain something to y'all before I end this video. And this is very important. And this is of a medical... Excuse me. This is of a medical um, terminology or whatever. I don't know the exact medical term. So I'm going to give you my term. Alright. So. Everybody knows that adrenaline is going and an adrenaline dump can be bad for your health if you have never experienced an adrenaline dump um also um if you have any um latent or dormant respiratory or physical conditions it can um also have an effect from a damn adrenaline dump all right i know you're thinking well what does that have to do with adrenaline all right when you are running really strong, really hard, and your adrenaline is pumping and air is burning in your lungs because you haven't ran that hard before, well, when you have an adrenaline dump, it's kind of like that, and it kind of sucks in and goes out kind of at the same time, and your adrenaline doesn't know where to go. So it's just like dumping through your whole body, all right? So I'm probably not explaining it right for everyone else, but for me, that's my adrenaline dump. It seems like I'm on fire, and... Um, it's like when you run track 
and they tell you don't collapse. Like when you're in school, you have to run the mile and you have to beat the clock. You find your fastest damn time, or whatever. And then when you stop, you have to keep walking because if you drop, it could cause um, all kinds of issues. Some people have had heart failure running the mile and then they died. When I was like 12, I knew a guy who died on the track. I didn't know him personally, but he was kin to somebody that one of my uncles was dating. So they died. When your cardiovascular system is pumping and running on overtime, not like your normal day, you know, if you're normally like in the wrestling ring or the fighting ring, then you're above this level of what I'm talking about. Because most fighters, you're training every day. Your body's not used to not training, you know. And when you're not training, you're still training because you're, you're, you're going to go somewhere, knock out a few reps because your body kind of needs you to do that. If you're not a martial artist, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But as a martial artist, sometimes your body needs you to train. It really does. You may not think about that right now, but it does. And if um, this guy <coughs> excuse me, had latent respiratory problems or any kind of respiratory problems, um, after whatever went down, his body would have went into like... Um, it's kind of like a form of shock, but it's not like hyper shock. It's like it's like a form of shock. Wish I could remember the name of the shit. Somebody knows what I'm talking about, but it's the opposite of an adrenaline rush and an adrenaline dump. It's like that that um, god damn it. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. And it's definitely not a euphoric feeling, all right? But what it does is, all right, so you're down and you're like this. And you got a lot of people around you and you got a lot of things going on. And your body is um, adapting. Uh, you have yay so much gravity the closer you are to the ground, all right? I know, it doesn't sound like this has something to do with that, but yeah, the closer you are to the ground, and then you have pressure, you have yay so much pressure from this guy who clearly weighed like about a buck seventy or better on this guy's neck. This officer was not no light set dude. This dude was big. I mean, he was pretty big. The guy who was on the ground was fairly tall, but he was kind of thin, but the guy on him was kind of short and kind of thick, you know, and you got that pressure on his neck Plus the fact of gravity, the lower you are to the ground, the gravity is a little bit more harder. And if you don't believe that, think about sit-ups and push-ups. Think about when you get down to the ground and you do that workout and how easy it is for you, if you're a martial artist, if it's easier for you to kick up to your feet versus turning over and getting up because you feel that weight. But when you're kicking up, you don't feel the weight as much because your legs are in full gear and they're throwing you through the air versus you're going to be on the ground. you just done like yay so many sit-ups. So now you're going to roll to get up or you're going to set right up. And you feel that weight here and here as you come up. Just go do some sit-ups. You'll, you'll figure out what I'm talking about. So to have that on you already because you're on the ground and to have another guy's weight on your neck is adding the pressure and inside that there could be super radio nerves being damaged there could be all kinds of things like I said these three bones on the back of your neck technically it's five but all of them that are connected to your um to your brain stem those damn things is probably what was damaged which would cause him to have died because those are also nine times out of ten those are injuries that if you're not at a hospital if you're not getting x-rayed no one's gonna know that they've been hurt no. If you've never jammed your neck, like, not intentionally, but, you know, you, like, bumped into something and jammed your neck. And if you haven't jammed your neck ever, because I've jammed my neck diving at shit, um, if you haven't ever jammed your neck, you won't know what I'm explaining. But if you have jammed your neck, like, right in here, these three bones, whenever you have, like, massages and stuff, and they work on these bones, and they work right in here, these things are fairly fatal you know so um, you can do like some severe damage to these things 
when you have somebody whose knee is anywhere in your back, especially at your neck, because your neck's not made to hold that weight. If someone puts their knee in your back, like, this is ridiculous, but I'm going to do it. If someone puts their knee anywhere right here in your back, like from your shoulder blades to like your mid-range back, it's still putting weight on your lungs, and that's going to slow you down a bit. Remember I told you in the other two videos about putting someone in the chokehold and putting my knees in their back? It's because it was what I was taught to do before I ever got taught by the Green Beret. So, that being said, you know, that's why I do that. Instinctively, I do that because I know that if I can put pressure on their lungs, I can slow their breath down. But you can put pressure on people's lungs through their back and you can put the silence their lungs in that little bit of airway that goes through here. Because if you get the human body, a map of the human body, you have your your nostrils, which goes up and then down. So there's a, a tip in there where your nostrils is, where the air goes to your brain. And then the other part of your nostril, it goes into your throat, which is why when you hawk a loogie, it comes out of that little nasal passage and into your mouth and you can launch it out. I'm about to throw up because that was just so sick describing that. And then if you look at the human map of the inside, it that they connect and then they go down your your body into your lungs and your stomach. And so that's how a lot of the, and your heart. And that, that whole section is right here. This is your intestines. Your stomach is actually up here. You know. So get a human map of the human body and you'll see what I'm talking about. And um you'll understand that that there, all of this is connected into these areas of your neck and gave so much weight plus gravity it's more than likely this this dude was damaged was the second that the guy put his neck knee on his neck and the thing about that as a martial artist i can almost guarantee to you that even a doctor could not tell you the damage that you can do to someone's neck with your knee no but as a martial artist i can tell you uh front of the neck back of the neck side of the neck your neck is not um a very strong part of your body that you can protect. All right. I mean, you can protect it blocking, and you can tuck your chin. You know, because they always tell you in boxing, chuck, tuck your chin. I mean, if hopefully you you have a good jaw and not a glass jaw. Chuck your tuck your chin, or tip your forehead. Anything to protect all of this. Where well, the average Joe doesn't know that. You no, know, the average person who's just been in maybe one or two fights in their life, they don't know that. But cops. You know what you're not supposed to do. You are not taught to put your knee in someone's back. You're not. You're not taught to put your knee in their neck. And if you are taught, I don't know what police academy is going to let that go because they not too long were working on banning the rear neck and choke. You know, because uh, our neck is a lot easier to snap than people think. All right? It is. Neck damage, uh, ask rustlers, they'll tell you. Neck damage is more likely what will end your career faster than a rotator cuff, a uh, ball joint, an elbow pain, a hip replacement, a knee replacement. Most people's careers most likely end through um, neck joints. And so these are things you need to take into consideration. I'm sorry for this young man's loss of life. I'm sorry to his family. And um, thank you guys for watching. This is Comfort Avenue number two. Be seeing you.